All right. Yeah, my name is Alan. I'm going to be talking about agentic product development, really more of our journey into it. We're not going to get so much into these kind of principles we're started to formalize now as part of our development in this space. So what we're doing is we're trying to solve for agency in the in the web. And we're going to get to the peer-to-peer -peer stuff eventually, but I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey first on how this all got started. So a lot of my background is in uh, community work. I used to uh, work for this company called Discourse, an open source forum. Uh, I was eventually VP of community there. A few years ago, I uh, started my journey as an indie game developer, which is something I've been doing really all my life, but now I started doing it uh, as a full-time gig, while at the same time building the tools that I needed to be properly independent in my game developer uh, venture. So my whole mission is really to reclaim my identity. And <laughs> this is really guided by anxiety, because my identity, like 90% of me, lives on these four platforms. Uh, and it just, it stresses me out. I, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't like the fact that if any one of these chunks went away, a huge part of who I am and my work out in the world would just be wiped out. Uh, so to put it a little bit more, uh, yeah, the, the, the fuller picture, like the remaining 10% looks a little bit more like this. I won't linger here for, for too long, but you can see how if you make it, um, if you look a little closer then even something like messaging, you need to break it up into several components, like global group messaging becomes Discord, local group messaging among your friends might be uh, for Telegram, for secure messaging element, and so forth. Um, so in order to wrap my head around what I really needed to do to uh, wrangle myself out of this situation, I needed some kind of an ontology for the communication stack that I rely on in my day to day. Um, and I have started referring to this very basic framework as a, a community OS. And I'll take you quickly through the uh, components of it. So first of all, there's this notion of a digital garden. It's been popularized by uh, someone called, I think, Tom Cricklow, who wrote an excellent article about it uh, almost 10 years ago now. And this is an illustration from uh, the excellent Maggie Appleton. Um, and we're really talking about different types of flows. That's the, the metaphor we're going for here in these different components we're going to break down. So in the garden, you're in a much more contemplative, meandering flow. And it's going to be made up by applications like wikis, blog posts, things that just link to each other a whole lot. And that's what assembles this ever-growing garden that is never really in, in a, a fixed, linear place. Second, we have the streams. I, I don't usually like to use AI imagery, um, but it felt very fitting here because that's really how the stream feels like to me. It's just very uh, oppressive uh, in your face. It doesn't have to be that way, but that's the way they are designed today. And this is a much more declarative, linear flow. It's just a fire hose of information, and it's not really something you can stroll around in. It's something you just receive uh, flowing through you or, or at you. And lastly, my favorite is uh, the campfire. This is a much more of a discursive, omnidirectional flow. Uh, it's exemplified by software such as forums or, or group chats. And it's in this very simple structure of you're going to be circled around a campfire, right? And everyone is kind of on equal footing, talking to each other one at a time, much more structured style of discourse. And lastly, oh yeah, um, and it's important to note that there are no strict boundaries here between these three different components. So to use Reddit as an example, you have the individual threads in Reddit, and these are more like bonfires where people have uh, a pretty organized conversation between themselves. People kind of take their turns to, to uh, have their say. But the front page of the Reddit feed is much more like a stream. It's just updates every single second. You'll have new content coming in. And lastly, the uh, best of or last week, month, year filter that you can do on Reddit 
This is much like a, an automated form of a, a garden where it takes a bit of a sampling for you from Reddit to say, here's uh, some of the, the best stuff recently. And it uh, does this curation for you. Now lastly, in the middle of these three different flows of communication, we have identity. Um, so all of these flows, identity is really the conduit of flows that sits in the middle of them because you bring your identity into all of these in order to interact with the others. And that's why I'm referring to this as a, an operating system um, because it's an operating system of protocols. That's what we're dealing with in, in communication is uh, if we want to be interoperable, then protocols are the way to do it. And the world now is, is looking quite promising. We have a lot of these already very stable protocols that we can build upon. And we have a, as well these emerging protocols that are showing a lot of promise. Um, and I won't linger too much so we can move on here. And this is what I'm working on now. Uh, it's called Weird. Uh, and uh, it starts off as just this, the simplest version I can imagine of uh, an identity layer that we can then either build ourselves these other components on top of, or really just be the interop layer for others to uh, work together with us. Uh, <laughs> this looks like something wrong happened, but this is really where it all started for me. Um, up there on the top is my own domain, erlen.sh. I'm, I'm very fond of this domain about a long time ago. Uh, shout out to the people of uh, St. Helen, uh, who are the custodians of it. But I've never had something to put on this domain. And I've been a nerd in the web space for decades now. Um, and I still have, I have a blog on the, the subdomain of erlen.sh. But I never felt like I had something appropriate for the front page, because the front page is supposed to kind of be something. Like, it looks like something to have a front page. It's supposed to have this whole structure and show people, like, these are all the other parts of me that you can check out. And it was just too much of a hassle. So that is really what we've been trying to solve for for the past two years or so, on and off, is how can I have a... Uh, yeah, a, a website generator essentially that is easy enough and also gives me the agency that uh, gives me an incentive to, to run this on my own to some extent. And right now, this is what I'm doing instead. When I'm writing an email to someone, who, which I do a lot as a uh, communications guy, I just put the URL of my GitHub at the bottom of the, the URL. Uh, and it's cool that that's possible, that they, especially when they introduced these like readme pages on GitHub, that made this a possibility for me. So I could just kind of spell out, these are my projects. And since I operate primarily through GitHub, that was a pretty, uh, yeah, no, sensible place for me to start off. But it still feels really awkward that I'm signing my emails with this just custom URL from GitHub, yet another platform that I don't really control. So we started building this thing, and the first thing we did was just to build uh, a simple prototype with a regular web stack. And what we had realized was there was this new convention coming uh, up, which was the kind of link tree style of making web pages. This seemed like such an elegant way to get something at all started in your own space because you are not asked to write a whole blog in order to get your space started. You're not asked to set up a whole fancy structure for your own space. You're literally just asked, do you have at the most, or at the very least, one link to share on here? And so that's kind of the template we're going for. So this was our first prototype, and it, it felt nice, but it still didn't feel like it did anything special enough that I was ready to move this on to my domain because 
it didn't really give me any new agency. I could do the same thing with Linktree if I wanted to. It was just open source, but I still had to deal with command lines and such to make it happen. So it wasn't really a space that I could have proper agency over for myself. So the second thing we did <laughs> was uh, we rewrote it in Rust. We figured maybe, maybe that'll do something. Maybe uh, <laughs> uh, that'll feel different. And it, it was fun. It was, um, it was a cool experience. But of course, it didn't really change anything. It was just a fun stack to work with. But where we went from there was the first hint of something that really mattered. Because once we had this uh, new website made in Rust, we did another pivot over to a, a local first stack based on Tauri, where the, the website you wanted to make could be generated locally. And, and this started to feel like something. This, this actually mattered. Because I grew up in the, the WordPress era of, of websites, and I'm sad to say that it hasn't really gotten any easier than back in the day when I could run a WordPress instance locally to try some stuff out and get that feel for, oh, this is how you make a website. Uh, nowadays, most people, I think, don't even realize that they don't even really need to be on the internet to make their website. So that was a first bit of, of agency that we, we reclaimed here with this uh, prototype in that you don't even need to have your computer connected to the internet, and you get to see your, your website generated there, uh, and then you can push it online. But that's still, it still leaves a lot to be desired for the, the user experience. But, okay, we, we have a starting point. Um, so we, we have a way to just generate this simple web page, and now you get to take up some space on the web. So great. Now this is our, yeah, longer term plan for what Weird should be capable of in order to give you the, the agency we're really looking for. So we're happy enough with the first stage here of letting you create your own little calling card. Second of all, we wanna be able to also have your website act as your own identity provider. And lastly, we also want a way for these identities that are yeah, can be spread across many different spaces because people should also be able to self-host this. We need a way to connect them together into what we call a network of shared purpose, which I'll get into a little bit at the end. Now, this is the, the current state of affairs. And I, I really love this screenshot because it really encapsulates um, the, the kind of state of UX we're in as well. We have on the left here, like the, obvious default option of you want to do it the easy way, log in when what on the existing big providers, right? Or I guess you could do it like with email and just it fills up the whole same space as three other options. Uh, and you're not really even supposed to do that. Like they don't, don't want you to do that because that's less data for them to collect. So that's where we're at. And what we need to do is we need to decouple identity. So the kind of trick these uh, big corp providers pulled on us is that all mainstream identity providers, they get you hooked into their ID network by a tight coupling between a light identity layer plus a heavy service, right? So GitHub, that's really ID plus Git layered on top. Discord is ID plus chat layered on top. Gmail is ID plus email layered on top. So with Weird, we wanted to break out of that, but we also realized you, you can't really just provide identity and say sign up for our thing and now you can sign up for other things. There's kind of a chicken and egg problem there where people just aren't really interested in uh, yeah, signing up just for that. And also your potential partners who would add you as a login provider aren't really interested in dealing with you until you've proven yourself somehow uh, as a, a service. So what we realized was, well, we can at least make this coupling uh, much lighter and we can make it a much more natural coupling by coupling ID to your own personal website. It feels quite natural because you're, it's essentially a split between dynamic identity and static identity. Since your personal website 
in an ideal world might even be the thing that you set up as your first piece of identity on the web before you even have an, a dynamic identity there that starts talking to other services. And we were able to do this really more in the, in the last year, like start of this year really. Um, there's been a, a wonderful uh, confluence of tools that, that let you do this with ease. There's a whole bunch of open source tools right now that really commodify identity provisioning. And uh, a lot of you might be familiar with, with many of these names. And uh, Rauthi is a, a very light little uh, Rust toolkit that um, is so light and simple that you can literally self-host it uh, yourself. Um, and it's not gonna be a, a, any trouble at all for, for your uh, computer. And we've got some emerging or re-emerging standards that also make the extended vision of this possible. Uh, I'll, I won't linger on it, but FedCM and IndiAuth are essentially, FedCM is kind of in the independent identity provisioning in your browser, and IndiAuth is uh, the same thing, but in the server, meaning you could kind of just enter your domain name in order to log in somewhere. And until very recently, well, FedCM didn't really un exist until recently, and IndiAuth wasn't really compatible with the rest of the more standardized ecosystem. But this is, these are things are all now kind of working together. So this is kind of what we want to end up with. Now, this is just a mock-up, but the, we have this working. This is a screenshot from uh, Codeberg uh, where Weird would just be yet another option uh, among the, uh, yeah, the, the, the bigger uh, actors. Um, and there's a lot of promise here, right? Because we have an increasing amount of independent actors, independent alternatives to the big players, where Codeberg is one such example of if you disagree with the use of, of uh, GitHub for one uh, reason or another, Codeberg is there as an alternative. And that's also an alternative that we can very easily find our way into because it's not like GitHub would ever really be interested in supporting weird as a sign-in, but Codeberg and the like absolutely could. Uh, and it's really just a matter of them deciding it's worth it. All right, so we're uh, one step further. Um, we're gonna linger on this for a little bit longer, however because we now have our independent identity provider, but there's still something that could work better about it. So this is the, the, the Fediverse, uh, right? The, uh, the kind of a brand new world of uh, open social media. Now, this comes back to this uh, idea of anxiety be it being a guiding principle in, in how uh, this <laughs> how we've gone through this, this product development journey because we got to this point where, okay, now we have a bunch of proofs uh, of concept where I can kind of log in to a whole bunch of these services with my own login. So great, like now I don't have to have a bunch of uh, separate logins any longer to, to deal with since these services don't necessarily yeah, they don't really let you let you do that. So you're forced to kind of split up your identity even more. And that adds to the the onboarding difficulties of these platforms. The trouble is, of course, I still don't own my data. So even though I've made the happy transfer of moving over from Twitter to Mastodon, from Reddit to Lemmy, there's still that feeling of anxiety there because I'm still not in control. There's still a server admin who could decide they don't like me, they could disappear, and there goes my data. All right, so we're <laughs> about to get peer to peer here at long last. This is a very basic um, drawing of our architecture. And at the top here, you'll see we have Rauthi being used as our auth server. And at the bottom, we needed something for our data backend. Uh, and <laughs> this is, uh, yeah, where we uh, decided to be a little bit experimental since everything has kind of gone very smoothly so far and my coder co-founder 
told me there's this thing called uh, IRO. I'd sort of heard about it, but I didn't know too much yet about where they were at. And I must admit, I was uh, quite uh, concerned about the idea of building on peer-to-peer -peer tech so early on. Like we always had plans to be a distributed application, but last I had checked with the the peer-to-peer -peer space there was still a lot of work to do. So I didn't really know how this was gonna end up, but I'm really happy to say that working with Iro for us has uh, really been like working with any other platform as a service. Uh, I can honestly say, uh, once again, it just works. Uh, it uh, is really quite remarkable what it's allowing us to uh, do. Uh, I cannot go further into what's going on here, but I'm very happy that uh, this is possible for us. And on the, the right here, you'll see an indication that we're actually getting into our own little bit of federation as well, which to my surprise, we were able to get working with within a week or so by just building on top of what IRO already has uh, set in place for us. So now, we actually have a data backend that is a little bit more meaningful even than something that you could self-host because we have that optional path to real peer-to-peer -peer storage as well. So even if, say, you would be running your site through our weird centralized or like partially centralized service, there would still be that option for you to have peer-to-peer -peer as a redundancy layer, or even eventually you just yeah, drop uh, the weird service as a whole and go fully peer-to-peer, -peer, but stay connected to our network. So here's an, an example of this that we, we recently uh, completed. That is on the left, my actual Mastodon profile, and on the right is my Mastodon profile, all of its data having been imported into weird. So I have my sort of uh, core profile here, and as a subset of that, I can now either just as a private storage for myself or in public view for others, I have this whole backup of my Mastodon profile. So that has literally reduced some of my anxiety about my existence on Mastodon now because um, if somehow the server that I'm on should go away, I at the very least have a backup for myself, for my connections and for my writing done there so far. And we've already done this for GitHub as well, as of like last night, and we're gonna do it for a whole bunch of other providers. We just wanna like grab all of the, the data uh, possible for yeah what you want to do for, for safekeeping for yourself. So lastly, let's get really quickly into the network of shared purpose. In very short, that is really all about projects. Um, I do a lot of projects. Uh, I, I love projects. I, I kind of see the world in projects. I'm very project brained. And I am constantly on the lookout for people that I can connect with who are doing similar stuff as me. And I have been doing this very manually. I, I get on GitHub and I search for things like Rust game open source and I find other people who are doing that same kind of thing and I just reach out to them. And it kind of works, but it could work a whole lot better. And we want to automate this process as much as possible. So I'll give you at the very end here a very concrete example of how people could be networked together in also a very essential way that is really only possible to do reliably with peer-to-peer. -peer. Yeah, so we're actually at this point now quite a lot sooner than we expected, uh, which I'm, I'm rather thrilled about because we sort of thought that the third point here, maybe that would be like next year. Uh, and now we're already playing with it and that's a lot of fun. Um, but what I am so excited about for the longer term future is that we can serve this type of use case as well. So Rashidiyah 
is a uh, multi-generational refugee camp in Lebanon. It's a refugee camp for Palestinians and eventually also uh, it became for Syrians. Uh, and I lived there 10 years ago for uh, about three months. And the local nerds there, uh, they had done something really brilliant, which is always the case in these places when you're working within much uh, tighter confines. That's really where you find the most brilliant people. And they had made a, uh, a wireless mesh network so that when their internet went down, which could happen quite a lot, they still had a local cache of things like Wikipedia, etc. That was still available to them via the, the routers that were just sharing this information through a couple of servers that had these things backed up for them. Now, here's one of my uh, best friends uh, from that time. Omar has since become a, uh, a really successful and influential activist and artist activist. And he really, uh, I, I, I kind of use his, his use of, of social media is my North Star. Because I need to cater to people like me to be customers. That's how we're going to pay for this thing. But it's people like him who are going to make use of this thing in, in a much more real, substantial way. And I am just so deeply offended by the fact that he, in order to do his work, because he's an activist, right? He needs to just get stuff done however possible. So he can't really spend his time thinking, okay, how do I do this in, in the most like open web ethical way? He just needs the platform that gets the word out there. So right now, one of his primary platforms is Instagram and he's doing very well with it. But it's really such a shame that someone like him has to have his identity imprisoned on the web as well. And I will know that my project has succeeded, that IPFS, peer-to-peer, -peer, IRO as a project has succeeded when he can use our stuff in a way that makes him more effective in his work. All right, thank you very much. Uh, if you want to know more about what we're working on here, first of all, weird.one is our live site. We've got a, a really cool uh, web redesign on the way in the next few days, so it's going to look very different real soon. Uh, for the rest of these links, like just come and ask me if you need them. But in short, we're, we are existing on, uh, on GitHub as an open project. We have a, a pretty neat architecture document to explain a bit more how we're using uh, IRO. We've also got a document that we're drafting up called the Agentic Fediverse, which will soon live on Weird instead as kind of a, a communal garden document. And for the start of this journey, you can read my blog post, Reclaiming My Digital Identity, or if you want to kind of read it in reverse instead from the end, then read Weird Happenings. And uh, that is it. Thank you very much.